Surely they didn't wear corsets when they were pregnant. Hi, I'm Kara. I wore a corset while I was pregnant. Hi, my name's Betsy, and I wore a corset while I was pregnant. Hi, my name is Ali. I wore a corset while I was nursing. Oh. <laughs> I love that you brought snacks. <laughs> In March 2021, I called our very first meeting of the moms. This important summit was convened to once and for all dispel the mounting myths surrounding corsets and their supposed ill effects by discussing the most often overlooked but glaringly obvious implication, pregnancy and nursing. I called on longtime reenactor and historical dressmaker Betsy and my YouTube partner in crime, professional costumer Allie, for a summit to discuss the historical practices surrounding corsetry and pregnancy, as well as our own experiences wearing corsets while pregnant and nursing. It was not something that ever occurred to me when I started the hobby. I was like, oh yeah, corsets, la-di-da-di-da. And then I got pregnant and I was like, what now? Women wore corsets most of the time. That was a very normal thing for them. And so it would have probably been weirder for them not to wear corsets while they were pregnant. Women wore corsets. They had babies. They were probably wearing a corset while they were having babies, right? People so, wear belly bands when they're pregnant. It's Absolutely. exactly the same. One of our um, friends from the Living History Society said, oh, I have a maternity corset. And I was like, of course that was a thing. I must have it. And so she lent hers to me, which was given to her by somebody else. So it's kind of like a hand-me-down, hand-me-down. It's buttons up the front. And I think there's like a lot of different ways you can do it. You can have laces <laughs> down the front or they might lace down the side as well. Oh yeah, there's boning down the front too. There's a little bit of boning right here, but it's just in the front and the back. And I think that was also what the Working Woman's Guide said about them. And there's a lot of different options in a corset too for the amount of support you need. Some women, even pre-pregnancy or post-pregnancy, don't need as much support as other women do. There were patterns for uh, pregnancy and nursing corsets. Uh, the most common one is from the Work Woman's Guide, which came out of the late 1830s. I found um, some examples of uh, patents for nursing corsets um, and maternity corsets. When you find things being patented multiple times, that means people are trying to find ways to meet the need. Allie, you used a patent for your nursing corset, right? I did, sort of. Someone kind of put together a handful of patents to make it as simple as possible. And I have mine right here, too. So it's um, got buttons that open. And there would be the booby. Yeah, I remember when we went down to, was it like Rochester or something? They yeah. had this, welcome to the history times. Anyway, some guy dressed up like a fur trader came up to Allie while she was feeding Will. And I was just, I just found like a quiet spot under a tree and was sitting on the blanket. And I was like, I have no shame. It's kid number three, whatever. I'm feeding him right here. And he's like, good for you. Good for you. Thank you. So the work woman's guide has like the buttons. Um as one option and then it had this really like I can't even explain it it was like a bunch of um cords or like laces coming off the side here and then they went through like a hole and would button someplace else and then you'd unbutton them and then you could pull it down well, when you think of too about the changes that a woman's body goes goes through when she's pregnant and we've all experienced this you know your bust changes <laughs> your belly changes, your hips change, your back changes. I found my shoulders kind of changed a little bit because of how I was my, my shoulders body. changed so much. And I still have that too. You see all these options for like adjusting your body depending on how your body changed. And I found when I was pregnant that I didn't need a maternity corset, mostly because I just didn't have the time or energy to sew, to sew one. Um, but I never had the need for it because I have a lot of distance between my ribs and my hips, like a lot, a lot of distance. And so I was carrying the baby lower which falls below the waistline of the mid-19th century. And so everything just kind of rode a little bit lower. 
and I could loosen my laces and it still kind of formed to the shape of my body. And it was still comfortable even until week 34. I think there, you know, there's a lot of different experiences women probably had in the 19th century. Because I know Kara, you're, you had a lot of rib pain when you were. Yeah, because I am, you're as long waisted as you are. I'm like the opposite and short waisted. I only have an inch between my rib cage and my hip bones. Right. And you and I like, we have the opposite experiences where you're like, you needed that maternity course. And and I was totally fine through week 34 where in my corset. think about corsets there's always this kind of tight lacing myth and I'm gonna blame Scarlett O'Hara for this myth and her stupid 18 inch waist it's like she was 16 years old and wealthy Mm -hmm. and also not a real person Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's just so much evidence of people not wearing tiny corsets there's so much more evidence of women having a really normal size waist than women who were tight lacing to have teeny tiny waists they Mm -hmm. didn't need to do that they used optical illusions and the optical illusions they used were corsets and cage crinolines yeah they were absolutely yeah Yeah, padding bigger (laughs) hair on the sides everything makes you look like you have a smaller waist they didn't need they didn't need to tight lace and they wouldn't have done it while they're pregnant either Everything that I found that was discussing maternity corsets was like very much emphasizing comfort and making sure that you're comfortable. And like, it wasn't even addressed. No, but like none of these authors were like, don't tight lace while you're pregnant. Cause no, I don't think it was a big thing. I posted a picture of myself in my maternity corset and there were questions, you know, like, oh, isn't that uncomfortable? Isn't that restrictive because it's not elastic? You know, there was this kind of like subtextual like concern about posing that risk to the baby because there's this stereotype about corsets. Like, oh, they broke their ribs and it like rearranged all their organs. Baby's um, already doing that. Yeah, the baby's already <laughs> rearranging your organs. <laughs> That's so true. And the baby in there is in fluid, in a sack. Like they are so cushioned and protected in there in the first place. I can't imagine how uncomfortable it would be to try and lace your corset to the point where you would feel like you were restricting the baby. That's not how corsets work. And if they do, you're going to be in a lot of pain. Like even if you're not pregnant, let alone if you've got a really firm beach ball on the front of your body, I can't imagine it getting to the point. In, in 1800 in the United States, the infant death rate was at like 45%. It was really scary. I just can't imagine somebody being like, you know what, I'm going to lace this super tight and whatever, because it was clearly a concern. And it's something that's addressed in some of these texts, ways to try and prevent miscarriage. Some of it's kind of weirdly familiar. And you're like, oh man, have we come, have we come that far? (laughs) It was considered a very risky thing. Many women died in childbirth. Women would sometimes write letters to their children before they knew they were going to go into labor so that if they died, they basically had this letter that was like, be good to your dad and and behave yourself. And I hope you grow up well. (laughs) So like women can say, oh my God, (laughs) it's terrible. And then I'm reading this in bed and I'm like, you know, 10 weeks pregnant. I'm like, Oh my god, you read that while you were pregnant? I read it while I was pregnant. And then I I remember saying, like, maybe I shouldn't read this, like putting my Kindle away. (laughs) (laughs) I avoid I avoided everything like controversial or scary when I was pregnant. I'm like Mm -hmm. No, nope, yeah. I'm, I'm just here reading a book about all the women who had prolapsed uteruses. <laughs> Many women were afraid um, going into labor. Men were afraid that their wives were going to die if their wife survived. Um, it was a huge relief to them. So I don't know that they would have done something considered an oddity in the mid-19th century of tight lacing themselves during a time that's noted for being precarious for their health. A lot of women didn't have the opportunity to just go shut themselves up. That's a big myth you hear about like, oh, women would never be seen in public when they were pregnant because it was considered obscene. But a lot of women didn't have that kind of luxury to just stop doing everything altogether and never see anybody again. And you think about how miserable of a life that would have been considering how pregnant women got, <laughs> you know, in the mid 19th so century. Often. Some women were, were pregnant very often. And a lot of women 
had to work really hard every day and they still had children. I fought like demons. It's about women who mm -hmm. disguised themselves as men to fight in the civil war. And there were a couple of instances of women who were discovered because they had babies. So they were able to disguise their pregnancy and do all of the same work and totally keep their cover until they had their baby. And that was when they were like, oh, you're a woman. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're not supposed to be here. There's kind of, I think this myth that it was never talked about or never seen. One source I found talks specifically about when a woman could feel like she could go into public after she had a child. And what it specifically referenced was um, like when you feel like you've established a good nursing schedule. There are pictures of women nursing, paintings of women nursing. And so women who just like never nursed or like use a wet nurse or um, hide away when they had to nurse, it was considered a natural thing. They still struggled through it. They still had to deal with it. And, um, and so it's just a part of everyday life. The, the idea of formula feeding and like what did women do when they couldn't breastfeed is really interesting to me because that was something that I could not do. There are lots of products and advice about how to hand feed your child and there's still like the same level of well are you trying hard enough something from 1818 rather 1818 oh, okay. she's like i've raised eight children and none of them are dead so clearly i'm a genius mother <laughs> i'm the paragon of mothers and every you should listen to everything i say because <laughs> i clearly know what i'm doing and you don't <laughs> and i'm sorry you've killed all your children let me help you <laughs> Oh my god. It's real bad. And I'm just like reading this like, oh my gosh, nothing's changed. <laughs> no, no, no. The mom shamers are still out there. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Yeah, yep. it's a trap. Well, one of the things that I saw several years ago in person was um, a gutta percha breast pump from the mid 19th century and it's a breast pump and it honestly doesn't look too dissimilar to manual breast pumps that i've used <laughs> and it has like you know like um sort of like you know pump like a bike pump. <laughs> and it's attached to like a glass glass cup yeah there and were references to it in that same um 1818 text um, mm -hmm. where she was like, okay, I understand. Like there are, there are some women who medically can't do this. Um, and if you're one of them, like you should get one of these things. It's, I don't know much about them, but you should get them. And then you can hand feed your breast milk to your baby. I saw this in several sources, this idea that if you pump your milk and you throw it away, your milk will dry up. But if you pump your milk and you give it to your baby, then it will, it will be around and it will be fine. It's like magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's boob magic. <laughs> Your breasts know. They know. <laughs> they know. They know what you did with the milk. <laughs> Allie, this just reminds me of when we went to Boston and you were pumping and dumping and I was like, oh my God. Because my experience was like, pump, pump, pump more, pump more. Yes. It's never yes. enough. Never enough. So I'm like, oh my God, don't do it. <laughs> That's treasure. And you're like, what am I going to do with this? I don't have a fridge. Like, what am I going to do? I know. I, it, and there's, there's such a guilt, <laughs> just a guilty <laughs> feeling of throwing it out because I, I'm like, but there are people who could use it. I feel bad, but I have nowhere to put it. They also have, they don't look like our bottles and our nipples, but they did have bottles with nipples. You know, these are people who a lot of them had experience with animals, and livestock, and having to nurse them and feed them. So it was, I think they were a little bit more exposed to it potentially and, and you know, what it meant to have to hand feed a baby. Yeah, yeah. I read a couple of things, references to uh, India rubber, yep. a heifer's teat. So they'd like literally cut it off <laughs> and then like save it <laughs> and then no. um, tie it on with a string <laughs> and put a little like sponge inside. Um, yep, yeah, I've, I've heard references to sponges and washcloths, you know, and using that. When when Ty was born, um, I had to pump to feed him. Feed him with a tiny little cup that had a little tiny little spout on it. And uh, and he, he could just take, like, he just basically put a, like, a little bit in his mouth and he'd drink it, you know. Um, 
And he loved that because it was like speed milk on tap. <laughs> That's a thing people have done for centuries. So you know, this is just conjecture, but I think children probably got more used to drinking out of cups earlier than our kids do. Yeah, so. they're totally capable of being careful with the cup and then they spill it and then you're like, oh crap, good thing I live in a sod house and my floor is dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Corset or belly band? Modern or historical? What was better support garment? For me, there was no like elastic. <laughs> and to be fair, I was wearing my pre-pregnancy corset throughout my pregnancy. So I had a little different experience. But I'm going to say like they both have their positives. I would say the maternity corset because my belly bands, no matter where they were, they just felt awful. And I'm not sure if it was because I, I was really hugely pregnant in June. So like summer pregnancy sucks. It really does. It's so I hot. I couldn't tell or if it was like painful because the belly band was putting pressure on my ribs or if my ribs were just painful anyway. Yeah. I was never a fan of the belly band. It just always felt too tight. I mean, I could, I could wear it for a few minutes and it would, it take off some of the weight, but then after maybe five or 10 minutes and be like, okay, now it just feels tight and uncomfortable, but I never wore a maternity corset to compare it to. Yeah. I feel like the maternity corset, because it has straps, it really helps distribute that weight a little bit better. Um, so the shoulder straps helped a lot. And then it, it kind of, it's so long that it cups down below. And so you can kind of like adjust the laces, um, to support it. I could definitely see that with the laces where it ends up kind of like kind of being a belly band where it kind of goes underneath and kind of lifts things up. You're like flopping around everywhere. I can't move. I feel like a whale. <laughs> <laughs> Which was more convenient? Nursing bra, modern nursing bra or nursing corset? I had intended to wear my normal corset while nursing because I had kind of tested it out <laughs> and found that I could like basically get my breast over the corset with just like undoing the top parts of the busk. And I was like, mm, I'll try that. And if it doesn't work, then we'll go from there. So I, I never got to try it. So I can't speak to it, but I know Allie has experience with it. <laughs> yeah. I never tried to nurse in a regular corset. One article that talked mostly about pre-patents women mostly just took an old corset and remade it themselves they would just cut out holes for their boobs and then sew the flaps back on and made it so that they button it was supportive it was really supportive I actually really really like my nursing corset the boning only goes up to here under the bust the pads are corded so they're supportive the only reason why I think it was not so convenient is just how many layers you wear when I would nurse normally it's just like unsnap whip my boob out there's a lot of reasons why corsets are great. <laughs> like they, they aren't tools of torture. You make them to fit your body. I've, all, I've been way more comfortable in my corset than I have been in many bras. There's I think a, it makes sense. Yeah. Doing work in a corset because that gives you so much back support. You're just like, yeah, I can lose this, whatever. Mm -hmm. Women in history, they knew what they were doing. <laughs> yes. Yes. They were not victims of circumstance. They had agency. They had choices. However limited they were, they had choices. They knew how to make things easier for themselves when they needed to. They knew how to rely on their ingenuity. We want to be modern Marvs. Like that's yeah. our hashtag modern Marv is mm -hmm. our, like, we're going to make it a thing. It's, it's going to yeah. be a thing. Yep. Lots it's of already happening. And yeah. I just want to be clear. We invented it. Yeah. Yep. You, yeah. You need, to hash, you need to hashtag it. Like, yep. Hashtag modern Marv. Modern Marv. <laughs>